This is the Music and Mental Health Podcast with Theology and DJ Fat Lane. and Mental Health Podcast, episode 22. I hate to say this, but this is actually going to be the last episode of the Music and Mental Health Podcast. Don't worry, though. It's only a rebranding thing. We're going to change the name of the podcast to something more SEO-friendly, and we're going to go from there. We still haven't decided yet, but it'll be coming out under a new name next month, so stay tuned. 
In this episode's discussion, we're going to talk about the concept of Ikigai, and I'm really excited for it. DJ Fat Rain and I are going solo. No guests involved this week. You just heard mine and Maddie P's remix of Mario Kart Wii's Daisy Circuit. And up next is a classic that I heard uh, when I saw Devin Key DJ recently. This is Rebus and Future Class with Mario High.
You just heard Vector use remix of Super Mario Kart's Mario Circuit, and before that was the Victory Fanfare from Final Fantasy VII remixed by Beto Siba. Up next is a track I debuted at VGMCon. This is Leave Time for Love from Secret of Mana, my remix. is a world debut. Here is mine and the Limit Breakers remix of Secret of Mana's Distant Thunder. Enjoy. Oh, 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 
great track there that you just heard that I did for Bugcap 2023. Thank you for your support. That was my remix of Hordes Timed. And up next, we've got one of my favorite games ever. This is the Fabula Nova Crystallis from Final Fantasy 13, remixed by Beto Siva. Enjoy.
You just heard Player 2's rendition of Mario Kart 8's Moon View Highway, and before that was the Zontron remix of Penny's Battle Theme from Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. I was just recently turned on to Zontron, and oh my goodness, that guy is amazing. Up next, Mine and Noteblock's remix of the Mario Kart DS Wi-Fi menu theme. Enjoy! Music and Mental Health Podcast
Zontron there again with a hard style spin on Pokemon 2000's Lugia song. And up next is my boy Equalize with the Dark Knot mini boss remix from The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess.
That was my take on Shovel Knight's Strike the Earth, Planes of Passage. And up next is a little Mega Man X for ya. Here is Blind's drum and bass remix of Storm Eagle.
Slipstream at it again with his remix of Sparkman from Mega Man 3. And to close out the music section, we've got Pokemon's Team Rocket Hideout Ultra Loy's Chill Hop remix. Let's cool down. This is the music from Mental Health Podcast. it for the music portion this month. Let's get into our discussion about Ikigai. What is up? Welcome to the Music and Mental Health Podcast. Nathan and I decided to do this one solo because we haven't since like, I think episode 13, something like that. It's been a while. Been a so a yeah, yeah, seriously. Oh my gosh. So um, <laughs> this is kind of kind of be sort of the close of a chapter um we're going to be doing uh this is our last podcast under this name we're still going to be doing our podcast do not worry it's just going to be called something different we're going to rebrand it i don't really know to what yet um but we'll figure it out it will come yes um so nathan what did you want to talk about today oh first the music and mental health podcast for the very last time, is sponsored by Steve. <laughs> Steve, the raging, raving banana. Steve's a little dirty right now. He's been partying pretty hard, hence why he's censored, if you're watching a video. <laughs> this guy, he oh. seems to I'll tell you that. Yeah. All right, I'll put him away. Thank you, Steve. Thanks, Steve. Please, yeah, please don't sue us when, when you take a shower. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, Nathan, what do you want to talk about today? So, you know, Benley and I were were discussing and talking about where we're at and kind of, as Benley mentioned, around kind of a closing chapter. Um, something that's been present through our conversations and what's going on through in his life right now is the Japanese concept of Ikigai. And what Ikigai is, is the combination of alive and life and also the benefit and worth. And it's just talking about at its core, something that gives your life worth, meaning or purpose. And, you know, talking about music and mental health, that is something that is very present for Bentley right now, as he's transitioned into full-time music and has found his Ikigai. 
So something that I, I really would like to dive into a bit further, because I think all of us in some ways are, you know, we're, we're always lost a little bit in our lives and trying to find what our purpose is and purpose through purpose comes motivation, through energy. And if you think of it in a Venn diagram, you're in the middle. Yeah. And if they're around it, you've got something you love. Are you paid for it? The world needs it and you're great at it. And in that middle is Ikigai. Yeah. So to you, Bentley, can you give us a little background on mm -hmm. where you are, where you where you were and where you are now and how Ikigai has played a pivotal piece within that? Yeah, totally. Um, but I'll I'll say it like this. So, of course, if you've been following my journey at all. Um, and I'm telling the listener, I know you, you'll know that I've had a lot of iterations in my music career. I'm now focusing on this video game music and mental health stuff. And the reason that it is my Ikigai, <clears throat> you know, I'm realizing this because I quit my job in May, my corporate job, and I have been able to pay my bills with music income up until now. And that's felt amazing. To supplement my income, I'm doing Uber as well, which I actually love. And I've only delivered food. I haven't actually ridden anybody around yet. Um, but even so, I find it slightly addicting, which is kind of weird. I don't know. They really gamify it. That's just whatever. <laughs> it's how it goes. But um, no, like to be able to pay my main bills with music is something I've never been able to do really before in my life, except for when I DJed one of the horse shows that Maddie was working at and I got like a crap ton of money for it, even though I had to play the dumbest music. Oh my gosh, that was, that was bad. But anyways, I digress. The reason it's Ikigai is because I'm doing something that I genuinely love, right? This video game music stuff is, I, I mean, I'm just so passionate about it. I don't think I've ever been more passionate about something else in my entire life. The fact that when I infuse it with the mental health content, and, you know, by typing messages on the screen during my DJ sets and making the mental health content that we've been making, um, and especially my new series on video games and mental health, there's this sort of infusion of like, yeah, this resonates with people, you know, and uh, I'm, I'm good at it. You know, I have my 10,000 hours of DJing and, and probably production too. I don't think I've ever really calculated that, but you know, and we can always, of course, improve on things, right? I'm not saying I'm a master. I'm just saying I am good at it. Um, and yeah, and I'm finally getting paid for it, which feels great. It feels great to be validated in that sense, right? You know, because previously in my previous life, trying to chase the mainstream EDM, climb the ladder there, you know, it, it was fun for a time. I learned a lot, but it was never this fulfilling ever. And I don't know, I'm just really grateful I found this and I kind of stumbled into it, you know, through a really serendipitous chain of events. And yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm really, really grateful. So, I mean, that's kind of, that's kind of where I'm at right now. Um, it feels really good, man. And I've definitely seen a shift in your personality as far as your happiness. And, yeah. and you know, I've heard a lot from you around, meeting people at video game cons and mm -hmm. finally feeling the appreciation for what you're doing yeah uh, what you're good at right so mm -hmm. you know, you've got a combination of what you love and what you're good at but as we all know in life what you love and what you're good at doesn't always necessarily pay right which right. comes into what the world needs and what you can be paid for yes exactly now and some could argue not everyone needs video game music right but or remixes or anything else, but is a very strong community. It's a, it's a niche community that mm -hmm. is very passionate. Yeah, no, that's true. And I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. I stumbled upon a YouTuber, Dan Ko or K-O-E. I mean, that just means cow in Dutch if you say ku. So that's how I pronounce his name in my head. But well, Dutch. Yeah, he was, <laughs> he was talking about how i mean he had a video that kind of touched on these concepts as well and he basically said you really need to be giving value to people right and 
I, I stumbled upon these videos as I was driving home from California back to Lexington earlier in this year. And, you know, I thought, what can I do that brings value? You know, like I'm already doing the like messages on the screen as I do my DJ sets, which, yeah, I absolutely stole from above and beyond whatever. I'm transparent about that. Uh, Yeah, please don't sue us. Uh, (laughs) But uh, the fact of the matter is, though, when I'm making this mental health content, when we're making this mental health content, and relating it to the gamer scene. I don't know. It just, it, 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 it's unlocked this crazy sense of nostalgia and encouragement. And ever so every time I've done a DJ set where I've done this sort of thing, I always have somebody come up to me afterwards and say, that was unbelievable. Like that really like uplifted me and, Like, yeah, I mean, like I say in my bios, when I have to like send someone a a third person bio, I'm like, if people aren't hearing this anywhere else, I want them to hear it from me. Right. So I think that that is sort of the sense of providing value other than just making video game remixes. Cause yeah, not everybody needs that. Right. And not everybody even wants it. (laughs) Right. But there is, like you said, a very niche community that really appreciates it. And yeah, when you're able to, I guess, infuse the mental health content in in such a way, um, I don't know. It's just it's really fulfilling. I can't get over it, man. It's so icky, guy. Um, yeah, yeah. That's all I have to say about that. Or I'm gonna just keep ranting. <laughs> Did you ever feel like it was your mission to do this? Well, I always knew that it's been my mission to do something in music, right? it was just kind of hard to have like a cause right in mainstream EDM. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really is like, think about it. It it just seems like there is a sense of gosh, I need to be careful about how I say this because I don't want to be putting people down at all, but I don't know. Like it, most shows that I go to, it just seems like it's all about the DJ, right? Typically. And well, that's good and fine, I suppose, in spurts. I've never felt really comfortable with that. Like, oh, come here, guys, and worship me during my set. I've always wanted to have a greater cause than just, I play music, woo, you know? Um, So yeah, I I would have to say that, um, gosh, let me think. Again, I want to be very careful about how I say this because I'm not trying to put people down whatsoever. But yeah, just, I, I need a cause. I need a cause to work with. I've had causes sort of in the past, um, but never really within mainstream EDM. And so in, in a way, when I, you know, stumbled upon all these serendipitous events that got me into what I'm doing today, um, I wouldn't say that there's this like cosmic calling from the universe that I need to be doing this, but I don't know. It, it sort of feels that way sometimes. Now that I mean, I'm it doesn't in it, be necessarily a cosmic calling, right? Purpose, sure. can, purpose comes from within. It's not divine. Yeah. Well, right then, right. in in the sense of saying that, do you think this is your purpose? Yeah, I do. I genuinely do. And purpose can change, right? right. Just like goals. Yes. But you need to have something to work towards and an intention behind it. Right. Um, being in the here and now and present is probably one of the hardest things for people to do. My goodness, yes. Because we generally live in the past or, yeah. you know, the the definition of wish is basically something which doesn't have any goals attached to it. So I wish I could be yeah. better. I wish I, I could have this in my life. It has and no intention or energy behind it. We've talked about this in our life coaching sessions. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. Yeah, and... You know, what I, what I want to iterate here is that you did not just on a whim do this, right? This has right, been a long yeah. time coming. Mm-hmm. Uh, can you talk a bit about how you've kind of prepared your life to be able to enter into this new realm where you are finding your ikigai? Because it's, it's a long journey. It's not an immediate thing. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you have to lay your foundations, right? I feel like... Yeah, again, like I I didn't just stumble into this 
one day with all the things that I have in place now. It's been a journey of building blocks and dare I say stepping stones. But yeah, I feel like when you have all of these things established, so first of all, there is the production, right? Because I haven't always been a good producer. I'll flat out admit that I haven't been. In fact, I tell a lot of people like, no, I just got good at producing in the last like three years, which is true. Um, It is interesting how my urge to take Jason Ross, like, okay, so I'm just going to start from the back. My urge to take Jason Ross's masterclass was like, man, this is a thousand bucks. That's expensive, but like, whatever. I'm just going to do it, see what happens. So I did it. That's where I met Brian, prophetic. We made our track together, Soul Dreamer, right there. Ha ha ha. Uh, <laughs> it got played. It got on played ABGT. on. Oh. Sorry, it got played on ABGT. Big deal for those in the mainstream trance scene, and or I guess it was back then. I don't know. They've changed to more like progressive and techno. They're more chill now, but whatever. Back then, it was a huge deal for the kind of music that I like to make, and uh, that got me exposed to all sorts of other people. Brian knew everybody somehow. He knew Mayan. He knew Shaheen and Neil from 11. He knew Austin Mayer. Uh, there are old Anjuna icons as well. And all of these people taught me production. Then meeting Daniel Davis as well, taught me production as well. But the, um, the boldness that I got in messaging Mayan one day, I was like, Hey, you should give me private lessons. And he was like, yeah. Okay. And since you know, Brian, I'll give you a deal. And I was like, what? So flying out to Hungary and hanging out with him in his studio was revolutionary for my sound because I learned how to be more simple. Right. He showed me that I was way overdoing it on the plugin side and like how I was processing everything because of him. I have a more simple sound. And because of him, I feel like my remixes can compete in the arena that I'm in right now. Right. Because not everybody's can. Um, I remember uh, the reason that I decided to make my brand club ready video game remixes is because I would hear a lot of remixes of video game songs, but I would never play them at a show, right? They were cool. They were good. They just weren't what I would play at a show in the club. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, getting that foundation set, amazing. I could go on and on about like, yeah, I, you know, I've built this whole list of SOPs and goals that I have to hit every month. Um, But uh, yeah, the whole, the whole focus on mental health, honestly, that happened. And the reason we even started this podcast in the first place is because when I started to go sort of more towards doing video game music and, you know, I was, I was doing that sort of and mainstream EDM at the same time. Uh, I, I basically, I had a brainstorming session and I said, Hey, what is something that is super needed in our industry that isn't focused on that much? And, you know, I, I, in my research, I stumbled across, you know, like stories like Avicii killing himself because his mental health is out of control. Pierce Fulton, IO, right. And I was like, man, this is really like a need. We really need to start talking about this more. And I feel like once I made that decision and we started making this podcast, I would see it everywhere. It's kind of like when you buy a a car, right? That you've never really noticed before. But then once you buy it, you see it everywhere on the road. I don't know. That might be a stupid analogy, but uh, (laughs) yeah. So I would say another thing that I set up is just like, So the corporate job that I quit was I would write resumes for executives for like top fortune 500 companies. I signed an NDA. I can't talk about it, but I learned a lot about business doing that as well. And one thing that I was telling you earlier, Nate, is that in this iteration of what I'm doing currently, like I'm basically, I'm self-releasing everything, right? And I'm doing all my own marketing, all my own advertising, all of the business stuff I'm doing on my own. And a lot of it I learned through writing these resumes for these executives. So 
it's nice to sort of have that as a foundation as well, if you will. But also, I don't know, self-releasing is good because now labels aren't stealing money from me anymore, which feels really good. And in fact, I'm working with labels now that are like paying me to produce songs for them, like cash advances. It's nuts. Um, And again, money isn't everything though. And I I do want to be very stern about this, right? Like I am doing this for the right reasons. I'm not doing this so that I can make a billion dollars and be the next Zed, right? Like I'm doing this so that I can genuinely impact people's lives but like you know we need money right we live in a capitalist society we need money to live so if i'm going to make some money and be able to live off of my art that is impacting people for the better then great you know i don't feel bad about that but at the same time in the past i've been faced with several scenarios where i had a choice to make art or to make Algor- al- algorithmic <laughs> I have such trouble with that word algorithmic bullshit just to make money and it's never sat well with me to just do that to just make money it never has and yeah I guess like 16 years later here I am with such foundations and such ethics and such goals to where I don't have to corrupt my art anymore or I'm not even faced with the decision of corrupting my art. I make what I make and it's well-received and nothing feels better than that. And it is, all, it's hard to get here. It's a hard journey to get here as an artist. Again, I've been grinding for 16 years and most people don't see what's underneath the iceberg, if you will, right? Mm-hmm. They just see the top of it. And I know this is one of the most like, I don't know, lame analogies ever. It's so overused, but it's so true. The work that I have done to get here is immense. I have not stopped grinding for 16 years and I'm finally here and it feels good and I'm very happy about it. And I'm happy about it mostly because it is genuinely impacting people's lives and I'm not just in it to boost my own ego. Yeah. No, there's a, there's a lot in there and I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, you know, the things I really heard were the want versus need, especially when it comes to money. Um, You know, there's a lot of thoughts around money does not equal more, more money does not equal happiness. Absolutely. There is a, there is definitely, you know, a baseline of needs that we have to cover plus some on top. So we, you know, we have the ability to, to, to the most part do what we want, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the more money you have means the happier you're going to be. Actually, it's usually the opposite. Right. Um, what I'm also hearing is that, you know, there's a lot of aspects of your life that I know about that have gone into this mm-hmm. moment. Right. Um, you spoke about being able to write copy, you know, some things that you got from your corporate job that even yes. though you weren't happy about it, right. a lot from it. Yes. Um, your time in school, in theology. Yes, right? absolutely. You now have the ability to talk in a certain way and, for lack of a better word, preach the good word yes. of video game music. <laughs> Bro, um, literally, I was I was on KFAI here in Minneapolis in a news segment. Like, I made the news for video game music. Insane, right? But the headline is literally, Theology Spreads the Gospel of Video <laughs> Game Music. So, yeah, like, I'm all for it. Let's go. Yep. And then there was the networking aspect, right? Networking in life. I I have got the best jobs I've ever had in my life through networking. Yes. And these days, you know, as we move into a even more AI centric world, I have a lot of friends in the tech industry who have been laid off and are struggling to get new jobs, not because they're not good at what they do, is that you now have this huge layer of just getting in front of a person that is even harder. And in the yeah. end, connecting and networking with people will always get you further than just blasting out resumes because you're just a piece of paper and until you put yourself in front of someone which is very hard to do yeah you know emotionally it's it can be very taxing but you'll get much further in life for it um what i also heard from you was around like you've you've spent a lot of time really making sure that before you made this decision, you had a lot of financial pieces in in a row, so you could cover your bills. So you yes. could 
True. Do the art that you, that you want to do. Yes. So, I did grind and save money for a while to be able to like take the leap, if you will, and burn the boat. Right. So, yeah. So in my mind, yeah. you know, when it comes to speaking about Ikigai and purpose, think about your life and what you have done. And you'll find a lot of aspects of yourself that can apply into what you want to do in the future and the present, right? And it can take a couple totally. years to that point, but you have to start somewhere. And generally that's just writing. I think the hardest thing, and I, I know for myself, it's not always the easiest, is just free writing. And, you know, you sit there with a piece of paper, you're like, my mission in life is to shit. Uh, I don't know. Be gooder what? and stuff. Be better at things <laughs> and make yeah. things. And... Uh, yeah, I'm going to go outside for a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the cha I challenge people to just kind of rethink really about what you're what you want from life, what that purpose looks like and how you want to be present in the world. Because to get anywhere, you need to have intention and to have intention, you need to have, you know, mission statement, purpose, and understand what, what, how you want to give back to the world. Totally. Because if you find something to give back to the world, it will give it back to you if you put the effort into it. And my knowledge about people these days is that you have to do about 10% more than most people, which isn't that much to actually make a make an impact in some kind of way. Yeah. Just that much more and you will make an impact. Yeah, I know. It's One, true. Well, uh, sorry, do you have a question for me? Yeah. Go uh, no, go for it. Oh, sorry. Because I, I, I wanted to ask you, man, like, what is Ikigai to you? I want to hear you talk more because not only is your voice sexy, but you know, <laughs> you're also really smart. So, <laughs> I mean, it's a, and again, it's, it's a concept, right? It's a framework. Um, it's something that you can live by. And all that it tells me is, you know, purpose can change, but there still needs to be a theme in some way. Yeah. I've done and been a lot of things in my life. Um, I feel like I'm finally starting to ground in my future currently in awesome. my mid thirties, but you know, Bentley and I worked together when I was executive chef and, you know, in a kind of good a times weird, yeah, very good times in a, in a rough place in my life in some ways, uh, post my father passing away. And, you know, I look back on all the careers I've had from photography and it and carpentry and, running a Christmas light business and all sorts of things. And, you know, where I am now is that a lot of it has to do with people skills. A lot of it has to do with common sense thinking and ingenuity. And as we we're talking about networking, um, but also the practicality of life. Yeah, totally. And I'm very thankful for the experiences I went through. My twenties were full of a lot of financial struggle and struggle in a lot of aspects but i wouldn't change anything i'm glad i did what i did and made the choices i i you know obviously we would all make different choices in our life hindsight 2020 but that's right of course that's, that's, that's not a way to live life yeah yeah well also the video that i'm releasing in september about video games and mental health does touch on that note because it's about time travel so Ooh. I encourage you listeners, if you want to hear about that, my video will be coming out next month on that. But um, yeah, it, it is interesting though, how I feel like a lot of this just boils down to people and relationships, you know, um, hmm. the, b because, okay, the best advice I ever got while I was in my resume writing job was I worked with this guy who, again, I can't say his name, but he said that his dad gave him a piece of advice and he's like, and I want to pass it on to you. He said, a smart man knows everything, but a wise man knows everybody. <laughs> now I've always been good at networking. Right. But when he told me that I literally like, I'm like, I am living by this from now on. And again, like you said earlier, a lot of the best things uh, I guess job-wise, you said earlier, 
came because of relationships with somebody and networking, right? So I did want to touch on that because it, yeah. it's just such a good quote that like, I literally like, I live by that, right? I try to get to know everybody. And honestly, like even people that you least expect could help you will sometimes help you the most. They'll help you see things really clearly, even when you're not expecting it. I do talk about this in my video that uh, came out this month about Tara and her compassion from Final Fantasy VI. Um, so yeah, your heart I mean, should be open to that possibility, but w go ahead. To speak to that, I mean, going back to your Jason Ross Masterclass story, our mutual yeah. friend, Andrew Herker. Yeah, yeah, totally. Changed my life. And Literally. I met him through posting on a Facebook group post above and beyond 250. And he said, you're a friend of Matthew Bentley. You're a friend of mine. Come crash with me. Insane. And that, that man has been a, a great friend to me. He's also helped network me for a couple of jobs. Yeah. And I would not be where I am now without him. And that literally just came through posting on Facebook. Yep. And you knew He knew you. And he was like, you're cool. You're cool too. All right. That's it. Like, Nate, imagine if I had never taken that master class. Mm -hmm. of course i know you'd still be kicking ass somehow because you're just a dope person but like imagine like where what would have happened if that never oh my goodness it's crazy because yeah herkert was like revolutionary in mm -hmm. your life and i know that you know yeah. i haven't talked to him in a while but would love to see him again oh my gosh yeah it's it, it is funny to me how like we can kind of trace even this podcast down to that moment of like oh i'm gonna take jason ross's master class and then her curtain oh my goodness it's crazy yeah. i i love how the universe works sometimes it's a it's a beautiful thing yeah um, the the quote around like embracing the joy of little things being in the here and now mm -hmm. reflecting on past memories and having a frame of mind that one can build a happy and active life like we when we reflect on the past we generally reflect on the negative yeah and what we didn't do right and we don't give ourselves the grace to allow like happy memories and other things but it also talks about the present and meeting people mm -hmm. right it's like oh i'm too busy to do this oh i've got so much going on or like i can't i don't want to invest in this person totally understandable and fine but you never know what one interaction could do yeah right? it could be a five minute conversation which could turn into an hour it might not go anywhere right but I would challenge some people to, you know, when you have the feeling of like, I don't want to talk to this person right now, maybe, maybe just give it five minutes and see, see what you can get out of it. Yeah, totally. Um, there's a, there's a rule that a friend taught to me once around investing in yourself. And this kind of goes into coaching as well, is that he was like, invest 3% of what you make into yourself. That could be training. That could be networking event. It could be a course. It could be anything. Right. But huh. If you're not willing to invest in yourself, that could be a gym membership of some kind, right? right. Or personal yeah, whatever training. it means for you. Yeah. If you're not investing in yourself, then what's kind of the point? So you just, whatever money you make is 3%, which generally isn't, you know, a significant amount of money, but it can right. go a long way if you allow it to. It could totally. be a business networking event that costs a hundred bucks. Exactly. Yeah. And maybe you meet one person there that will start a chain of events. Exactly literally crazy man oh my gosh yeah i love how that works oh fiddlesticks man <laughs> this is a good discussion <laughs> i appreciate it totally so, yeah it's is it feels weird to kind of make this our final one as the music and mental po health podcast yeah me personally of why you know I think it's time to move forward from this name is that it can be a limiting factor for what we want to talk about. True. Yeah. And I think through this, you know, I've got some feedback from people you've got from some feedback from people that it's yep. been very beneficial, which yeah. heartens me in many ways. Yes. I, I, I want to take this to the next level and expand it further. hundred percent. I'm all so, about that. Yeah. yeah. Cause if we can help more people, yep. that's what it's all about. Yeah. Well, I love it, man. Thank you so much. Uh, I mean, I, I'm not going to talk like we're like not going to be making a podcast anymore. We're just... 
Steve Steve will still be around since just the banana. It, but yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love you, dude. Well, um, okay, so I guess I mean we're at like thirty five minutes now. Oh my goodness. Uh, one takeaway, each of us. You go first, and then we'll wrap it up. Purpose can come at any time in your life, but you have to start somewhere. Yep, and I would say keep your heart open to the possibility of meeting that one person who you have no idea, but could start that chain reaction of events that leads you to a place that is better. Keep your heart open to that. Um, Gosh, there it is. Wrapping up the music and mental health podcast, but we will see you soon under a different name. Nate, I love you. Thank you for being here. And I hope that, this journey of what 22 episodes has yeah. impacted you listener in some way, shape or form. Uh, so peace and love, and we will see you soon under a different name, which we will announce like a DJ announcement. Very soon. Announcement coming. <laughs> All right. I'm going to shut up. Goodbye. Thanks, <laughs> yep, right. See ya.